So hey there, and welcome back to another tutorial on how to use a HUD maker. Let's get straight into things. So last time, we went over the installation, setup, and the various basic mechanics of how HUD maker works. And now in this episode, we'll be looking into more of the specific pieces and how they work. So to start, of course, we're going to open up HUD maker just like this to get things ready to go. So first thing first, let's go to create a new element and create a brand new text element just like that. So to start, we'll be going over the basic mechanics on how a text element works. First is a value up here. Now simply put any text you want to make that appear. So for example, hello world, just like that. Oh, I can't even type. There we go. And hit refresh just like that. As you can see, hello world is now fit into that tiny little space and then crammed in there to make it appear. Now, if you make the max width smaller, like 120, as you can see, hello world will then be crammed even closer within that limited max width. On the other hand, if you had set something bigger, like 200 and then hit refresh, it'll spread out and use the width it has when typing out hello world. Now, if you give it a really, really big width like this, it'll have a lot of room to move around. For example, if you set the alignment to center, it'll then appear in the center like that, or right, as you see right here, it'll be moved relative to the right of the entire max width, as you see right there. While we're at it, we can also customize the display options for this text. For example, the font right here, so we'll set it to maybe like foo, just like that. So now, as you can see, it has a foo font for my computer, and also we change the text color and outline color. So for example, we'll set this to maybe, I don't know, light blue like that for the main color. Hit refresh and it'll be good to go. And then for the outline color, we'll set it to uh, dark red. So yeah, just like that. And then hit refresh. And now if you look closely, you can see it's light blue with an outline of dark red. Now that's cool and all, but how can we use specifically text to affect our HUD and make it work well? Well, let me show you. To start, let's create another brand new text piece and delete this old one because this one's annoying and stupid. Anyway, back in here, let's once again delete the value area just like this and input our own value, but this time we'll use JavaScript. Now, in order to input JavaScript into the text value, you need to use dollar sign, then a open swirly bracket, the JavaScript you want to input, then a closed swirly bracket just like that. So, for example, let's run a very basic JavaScript evaluation. So, for example, 10 plus 20 and hit refresh just like that. As you can see, the outcome is now 30 because it's going to JavaScript eval 10 plus 20, which is going to be equal to 30 just like that. But let's take things a step further. Let's try and make this text display the current leader's name. So as you can see in our game, our current leader name is Lyander, as you see right here. Let's make Lyander appear and then shift based on which actor is currently the leader. So in order to get the leader of your party, simply use the evaluation game party dot leader, as you see right here, including the dollar sign and the parentheses at the end. And then, in order to get the name of an actor, simply do actor.name just like this. So combining the two, to get the leader's name, simply do gameparty.leader.name just like this. So we'll go into our input eval like this and do gameparty.leader.name just like that and hit refresh like so. As you can see, Lyander's name now appears on screen simply just like that. Returning back to our game, let's try switching the leader. So we'll go back to our menu, go to formation, set it to Zilk, just like this. And as you can see, his name will now appear in the top little area right here. Once again, let's switch it to maybe like Cias, like this, and then bam, there you go. So as you can see, initially, it may not look like much, but the text element can actually be really dynamic and very helpful for customizing your game's HUD. Yeah. Next, let's go over the next type of element or type of piece in HUD Maker. So as you can see right here, it's gonna be text EX just like that. We'll hit create new, and as you can see, we now have a new text piece, but now it has an icon next to it. This is because the text EX element is similar to the text element, only allows you to use escape codes as you see right here. So by inputting backslash I313, it shows icon number 313, just like that. If we set this to, I don't know, backslash and then sub one like that and hit refresh, It'll show the name of the actor ID1, Lyander. So as you can see, it's an alternative, but not a very good substitution for our original thing, because this only shows the exact actor ID1 name. Well, this shows the current name of the actor that's a leader. As you can see, while text EX can be cool, it does have a lot of limitations, as you see right here. For starting, as you can see, it doesn't have as many properties as the actual, you know, text element. The next problem is you cannot input JavaScript evaluations. That's right, you can't do dollar sign, open swirly, close swirly. That does not work here. If you do so, it'll just appear like that. Furthermore, as you can also see, it doesn't stretch a fit its width. Instead, it just gets cut off. So you're gonna wanna increase the width by whatever margin you need, just like this. Along with the fact that, you know, you don't got the uh, alignment, you don't got the colors, you don't really have much to work with. 
But yeah, that's about it for the text EX element. We'll delete this one because it is kind of useless for what we're trying to do. Instead, we'll focus back on our main element like that and continue on to the next cool element type right now. The next one, as you can see listed right here, is going to be a shape element just like that. As you can see, this element is just going to be a very basic shape. We can set this guy to be either a circle or a rectangle just like that. As you can see, a rectangle is going to be more of a square shape and the circle is going to be a, a circle shape just like that. As you can see, you set the width and height, so maybe it'll set the width to maybe 120, the height to maybe like, I don't know, 50 like that. And as you can see, it'll stretch to fit our width and height just like that, both as a circle and a rectangle. Next, you can also change the fill style to be solid or a gradient, a gradient being the two colors right here. So for example, black and white. And of course, you can also choose a blend mode listed right here. Scrolling down our properties like this, you can also change the outline size and the outline color. So we'll set the outline size to maybe like, I don't know, three, and we'll set the color to like, a pink I guess so uh, bam there we go cool and hit refresh just like that so now as you can see our little shape right here now is a current outline that's pink colored and a size of three pixels mainly this elements can be for very minor decorations that can be used in very specific places to decorate or enhance your current HUD so it's up to you how you're gonna use this and we'll go more to this later when we get into bigger HUD projects for now, of course, we'll also delete this once again, just like that. And now the final two elements we're going to go over in this episode are going to be the picture and then the picture EX. Let's start with the picture just like this. So a picture, and then create new. And now as you can see, we have a picture displayed on our HUD just like this. If you want to change your picture, simply go into this image input right here, select your picture. So for example, magic circle, then hit refresh. And now as you can see, we now have a magic circle on our screen. Of course, as you can imagine, these pictures are based off of the pictures you input into the pictures folder. So go into game, open folder, we'll go to images, some random dude, HUD, and find the pictures folder right here. As you can see, these are going to be all the pictures available for our picture element as you saw in the editor. So if you want to use your own picture, simply drag and drop into this folder right here and you'll be able to use it in the main editor. For the time being, let's try using the, uh, I don't know, <laughs> I, I guess the uh, gold, for example. We'll go back into our editor, select, for example, uh, where is it, where is it, there it is, gold, and hit refresh to get our stack of gold just like this. If you want to make minor changes to it, you can simply do so by changing the properties right here. For example, scale X or scale Y, which change the obvious scales of the X and Y plane. So for example, 1.5 will stretch it on the X plane by 50%. Same thing for the Y plane. And just like this, if we go into our opacity, we can change the opacity or throughness of the image. So for example, 125 will make it like slightly transparent. Zero will make it completely invisible. And then of course, 255 will make it fully opaque just like this. If you want to set the hue, you can do so right here by setting it to a value between 0 and 360. So for example, I don't know, 123. Refresh, and then bam, our hue for our image is now shifted just like that. We can now set it to maybe like, I don't know, 255. And then once again, bam, we now have a different hue for our image. The final thing to take note of is of course the blend, which once again lets you change the blend of our little image right here. So yay, it's now added it. It's now multiplied, etc., etc. You get the idea, so we'll set that to normal for now. Now, the picture EX element is almost identical to the pictures element. The only difference is, instead of using a drop down menu for choosing a picture, you instead input a JavaScript evaluation. So, to start, we're gonna have to make sure our input returns a string. So, for example, set it to quote stained glass end quote just like that, and hit refresh, and now it's gonna use a stained glass picture we have in our pictures folder. Typically, you're going to want to use this for images that are going to match up to different evaluations that you can input into right here. So, for example, one input we did earlier was, of course, game party like so dot leader dot name, just like that. Now, this will make it so the image looked for is the game party leader's name. Of course, if we do that by default, there's not going to be an image name like that. Going back to our pictures folder, we'll go in here, we'll go to our, I don't know, chalkboard, I guess, and call this see us just like that while we're at it let's also set the runes picture to be called i don't know lyander just like that now as you can see when see us is the leader of the party it's gonna be the chalkboard like that but if we switch it over to lyander just like this as you can see it's not gonna be the runes picture just like that now you got to be very very careful in using a picture ex as for example if you do create a picture input that is not found within the pictures folder there's going to be an error. Now, say, for example, you made like a bunch of busts for all your characters that you want to appear on screen. Simply input the leader name, make them appear on the screen a certain part, and then their bust will appear corresponding to the name of the actor currently the leader of the party. But that's about it for this episode. If you enjoyed, please give the video a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe for, to, well, I guess they're all out, so you don't need to see them in the box or, uh, just, just watch the next episode.
Thanks for watching. I'm so out of breath. Bye!